Today, we're going to look at using stored procedures on Snowflake to return a result set. So in the documentation here, in Snowflake, it shows you how to call a, a, a sort proc here, pass in the table name and, and an array of columns, and you can get the data back. So we're going to use this, modify it a little bit, and return uh, our data that was created uh, actually from a Snowflake um, that we also have a script and demo for. So the Snowpipe demo um, is also on GitHub and, and it's over here. There's a YouTube on it as well. And here is the script that we're running today. It's also on um, GitHub over here. And we have this all documented on this script right here, which I'm showing you, which is essentially the same one that's on this GitHub right here. Okay, and you can also look at the uh, description to, to get the links to all of this. Okay, so this is store proc to return results that we just showed you. The data creation script it's just a simple table and uh, this is what the script that we're currently demo so the purpose is to create two procedures for our api to call we want to expose our table data to a stored proc and then and get that returned as json so the use cases uh, for this is if you wanted to use an api call and we're going to talk about that in a, in a moment so here we're going to create two stored procs proc is to get the last 10 records so that's pretty much in the name, get the last 10 records. Proc get record, where we pass in an ID and the variable, and in this case, name n, and we get that record return. So the benefits of, of using store procs is the procs provide the advanced business logic and cancellation and reusability on Snowflake. And the API calls allow a limited governed surface to expose Snowflake data. So you could, again, call this from an API. Okay, so we're just gonna set the context over here. Just says who we are. Notice the green light is not, so it's not the the snowflake isn't even paying compute credits yet. And we're gonna see that our data came in via snowpipe. So not there's gonna be a green light turning on here on our warehouse. That there it goes, it just turned on. So it's just saying this is the nums target pipe uh, table where we just created some records um, you know using this uh, open source script over here. So so it is here, you see a million different records. And so let's say we wanted to get the, the last 10 records. So we would call this call proc uh, get last 10, and we're going to pass in the table name nums target pipe, which is this, this table. And we're just going to tell it to return the three columns, n, r, and insert timestamp, which is exactly what we have here, n, r, and insert timestamp. So let's, let's just call that stored proc. And there we are. We've got the last 10 records. So as you can see, this is in alphabetical order. Um, it's a JSON document. Um, insert the time, the insert time span, the last 10 records. So million was the last uh, ID, 999,000. And as you can see, it just goes down until it goes to the bottom and shows us the, the last 10 records. So pretty straightforward. It is a JSON document. So now your uh, API can then um, use that data however it wants to do that. Okay. And let's say we want to get more sophisticated and we wanted to pass in an ID and get the record back. So again, uh, very similar call, we just added an additional parameter, which is the ID that we want the record for. So if I wanted the ID for record number six, I would just run this command. And as you can see, it is giving me for number six. If I wanted for, let's say a random number is 99, no problem. And it's giving me back the record for 99. So pretty straightforward as to what you can do with stored procs. So let's look at some of the definitions here. Uh, as you can see, this is the get last 10 records that we just called first. So the, um, the as you can see, it's passing in a, a varchar and, and, and an array. And this is the important part, right? So a lot of SQL folks, it's easy to kind of learn the JavaScript. You could take, just take a format like this and just plug and play your, your SQL part. You don't really need to know uh, JavaScript at all. Like I'm not very strong in JavaScript, but I just know enough in order to call my command. So you see select top 10 star, from and then it just adds the table name uh, that we pass in this parameter over here, ordered by n descending. Um, okay, so it's just ordering, giving me the first uh, 10 records. And the rest is pretty much just appending it and re returning uh, those rows um, to, to Snowflake. Now, the second uh, store procedure we ran was called proc get record here. And as you can see, it passes in the parameter name again, and pretty much the exact same as the previous one, but we just added the uh, uh, 
parameter, which we call param, and again, it is a varchar. And, and so again, the important part is, is right here. Selecting top five records from this table name where n equals, and then we just uh, append our parameter over here. So again, um, with, with all of this type of stuff, you have to be careful of SQL injection. So if you're developing on Snowflake or on any database uh, for that matter, you definitely want to be aware of that. So this is a trusted source. So, and, and we could limit the, uh, the ability for what role is being used to um, you know, protect our data. So just keep that in mind whenever you're doing uh, store procs and identity SQL. But again, we just demonstrated how, how simple it is to get a result set back um, you know, in, in JSON from Snowflake. So for a quick recap, we uh, created two procedures for our API to call. We exposed it um, via two procs, proc to get past 10 records and then proc get record. And so the benefits is it provides uh, advanced business logic encapsulation and reusability. And the API calls allows the limited governed surface to expose Snowflake data. Thank you very much.